hey y'all we're gonna do a podcast we're a little late today but that's okay um as i mentioned we did grand opening last night of the new evape tavern on happy holler so if you're in the old north knox area or whatever you want to come check us out we are now officially opened at evape uh uh, central Uh, that's at 1207 uh central street right across street flats and taps uh Anyway, check it out. We're almost in agreement. Uh, this episode is not paid for. I guess technically it is paid for by eBay because they do pay my bills. Anyway, almost in agreement, almost in agreement at gmail.com. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're on YouTube. Go to the website, almost in agreement.com while you're there. Uh, check out the voter guide that I haven't done yet. I'm getting there, I promise. Um, we got a little while. City elections. Nobody cares about city elections anyway, I guess. So, um, a little bit different than a normal episode today. I've got. Uh, one of mine and we're going to do a little bit and then we're going to sub out and the other one of mine are going to come and sit in and we're going to chat about um i don't know whatever i think we're there's going to be a fight somewhere in this for sure so almost agreement favorite podcast writer give us a like share friend follow tell all your friends about us spread the word and uh yeah here's the show hey bud day hey oh, that's not fair that's that's my that's my intro to Sam. I shouldn't use the same intro. So, um, Biggie in the house. Um, Vortex. Whatever. Okay, fine. Plug your crap and get it out of the way. What? Plug your stuff. Hmm? Plug oh. your... Plug. Okay. Uh, it's... At YouTube, it's Vortex space G tag. I don't post that much because... Underscore or space? It's space. Okay. Also, join my Discord server. It's dead. It's dead? Yeah, nobody nobody posts or anything in it. Oh. It has like but it's a vortex thing. Yeah. Okay, so you you don't post that much because we're having computer issues and it's just been this big back and forth trying to get it fixed. Yeah. Um, which going back to, to try to order things that are old are very difficult. So we've got an, a copy of Windows coming for you so we can get that thing rebooted and hopefully, yeah. fingers crossed, we're up and running. And um, Vortex is back live on YouTube as he, as he, as he deserves to be. Yeah. Um, for anybody that actually has Gorilla Tag, or anybody that listens whose kids play Gorilla Tag, it's interesting. you got no legs. It's a weird thing, but it's a fun game. I get it. Um, I understand the premise of it. So, I don't know. Um, you came out this morning, um, and I had to do some internet research for you. You want to talk about that? What? What did we talk about like 20 minutes ago? Huh? I already forgot. Wow. Uh, the social media cage match coming up. Oh yeah. Um, Elon and Zuck are gonna, I, I mean, I don't see, ring. I don't see why it wouldn't happen. I it's cause here's the thing to me, this is just, it's marketing, man. It's just selling stuff. It's just, yeah, because at the end of the day for those guys, good or bad, the more they're talked about, the more they sell. Yeah, and it's also going to be streamed on like all of their platforms. So they, they don't care about that. I mean, realistically, the money, well, the platforms part, I guess. But you know, like you have like the what was it the Jake Paul, all these Jake Paul fights. Yeah, Jake Paul. That's money. That's big money for a Jake Paul character. Elon Musk and, and Zuckerberg. Like Jake Paul is a joke financially compared to a Musk. Yeah. You know, so it's not they're not doing it to make money off the fight. They're doing it to make money off of what the fight will bring to all their other things. Yeah, and my, my money's on Zuck because he's because he's half his age, of course. Yeah, and also he is like an experienced fighter. I, I did see he was um, Rogan talked about it a little bit. There's apparently some videos of Zuck doing some uh, uh, jujitsu got out, and Rogan, who is a big jujitsu guy, was talking about how his technique's pretty good and stuff like that. I don't know what Elon Musk does. I'm sure he does some sort of um, something, or he wouldn't agree to it. Yeah, he but had, he's like fifty three, and Zuck's like thirty five. Yeah, I mean, come on. You know, I don't see it. I, I don't see it being. A, well, I don't know. It could be a real fight. Apparently, they have some actual historical beef. Um, while I was doing research for you, there was um, pre Musk buying Twitter. Um, Facebook had hired SpaceX to launch a satellite. And that was one of the ones that this rocket blew up and destroyed this multi-million dollar satellite of Facebook's. And apparently that kind of pissed Zuckerberg off. And well, he's, of and course. he's holding a grudge. And then Musk gets into the social sphere with buying a Twitter. And now he's a competitor in that thing. Which I don't know. They've never been the same thing to me. I don't understand Twitter. I'm just not. 
I'm, I guess I'm I am of the proper generation where I'm still I'm the old people on Facebook. I'm one of those. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. But, no, no. Th- there's like <clears throat> there's a joke going around where you're like boomer aunt will post dumb minion memes and stuff like that. But like, oh no, you're a little okay. Go ahead. Sorry. Finish. Like I I have a Twitter. I don't like do anything on it. It's literally I just oh you uh, I just like watch not watch. I look at like Gorilla Tags post on Twitter because they have like exclusive things that they only right. post on their Twitter. Right. Um, yeah, I just don't like the form. Like I'm so like this. This is just a, a, a old person rut move for me. Like I I know how to maneuver inside Facebook. I don't know how to maneuver inside Twitter. And so like when I'm in Twitter, I get very confused and crotchety when I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Although I should be in Twitter because the people that use Twitter are more in the political social sphere than facebook is so have you heard about the sub thing have you have your any of your uh we like what sub thing the sub that the the uh the sub oh yeah that, 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 i've seen so many i've seen so many I'll, memes like, about it i have i have mixed feelings on this thing man like you know whatever i don't i don't feel bad that they died like it sucks anybody dies i'm gonna be like okay that sucks like i'm not gonna i, I the idea of enjoying someone's death even a bad person. I'm not going to enjoy anybody's death. That doesn't seem yeah, appropriate that, to me. Yeah, that doesn't seem right. And it really bothers me how many memes and stuff are going around right now that it's yeah. like, yeah, they deserved it, those idiots. And, you know, they. I mean, like, they didn't, but, like, I, I would have to get paid, like, a billion dollars just to go in the sun I mean, for, like, 20 seconds. They took the risk and they, and, and they failed. That happens. I don't, I don't like, I, that sucks that, it, like, again, like, I'm not going to celebrate anybody's death, but. They took a risk. They didn't do the appropriate amount of uh, of double checking and, and risk assessment to make sure that this was a safe venture, and they did it anyway, and they died. I don't feel bad for them, but I also am not going to celebrate it. You get the you see yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I get, I get what you mean. I'm, I'm, I'm very like, but it bothers me how many people are really excited about this. Like, I, there's a lot of people that are celebrating yes. death, and that's not it's, okay. That's with me not either. like it's not a very okay thing to, to do in general. Yeah, I mean, just be like, just you know, acknowledge acknowledge the fact that yes, they're billionaires and they have the money to do something stupid like this, and and just be like, okay, they're dead. You know, I just I, again, like it's the celebration part that bothers me. It's not yeah. so much, you know, I, I think it's funny though. Like one of the memes that's been going around is like the Titanic is a graveyard, not a uh, yes, not that- a tourist spot. And it's like, well, we go the people tour tour graveyards all the time. Like, what's smart? What do you? What would you guess? Is the number one tourist destination in the world? I don't know the answer to this. I'm, gu- I'm guessing. I would you. think like Giza or something. That's what I'm thinking. Yes, and it, in it, like it's a freaking tombstone. It, yes, it's a massive tombstone. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try. There you go. Look, Google heard us, creepers. Yeah. Uh, the Louvre, Yellowstone, uh, the Met, Zion National Park, Yosemite, the British oh, Museum. Oh, hi, dog. Uh, Great Smoky Mountains. Look at that. What? Well, yep. I mean, I get it because. All right. According to lovehomeswap.com, the most 50 tourist attractions in the world. One of them is going to have to be like Disney. The Palace of Versailles. There's a lot of death Hollywood. There. Bourbon Street, Met, Lincoln oh, Memorial. Yeah, that's, hey, I mean, it's not. A, he doesn't. He doesn't. His body is not there, but, but that is a memorial to a dead person. Yeah. Uh, Lake Mead. Wow. Uh, lot World in Seoul. Huh. I have no clue what that British is. British Museum. Eiffel Tower. Eiffel Tower. National Air and Space. Hong Kong. Disney Cali. Islands of Adventure. and Universal. Sydney Opera House. Duh. South Street Seaport. Great Wall of China. There's a lot of dead bodies in there. Yes, yes. <laughs> and they also use like rice or something to bind the bricks together. Great Smokies. 20, wait, wait. 25 on the list. 25. That's... I mean, Insane. it has been it has been year in and year out that it's one of the top in the United States. And as we're going down those lists, I'm seeing a lot of U.S. Yeah. destinations. Um, Giza's oh Epcot, yeah. we went we went there. Yep. The big the ball was actually kind of fun to go in. I bet you there's some dead bodies in Notre Dame, but that's not really a graveyard. It's just whatever. Forbidden, Forbidden City, City in Beijing. Wait, there has to be Niagara Falls. There's some dead bodies there, but that's because they're being dumb. Vegas trip. I don't. I disagree. Vegas. With your list. Yeah, Michael's not Michael. Little MK. <laughs> it's too late now, man. <laughs> it's too late. But he's gonna be like, "Yo, let's go Vegas," because he's from there. 
uh, I'm a little, all right, well, we're wrong. It seems that the... These would have to be at least like top 100. Um, the Colosseum in Rome, there's a lot of dead bodies yeah, there. Yeah, um, The Louvre, Statue of Liberty. So anyway, more of the point, more of the story is graveyards are not un, like historically unpopular places. People like, like, uh, yeah. um, this dude, oh God, I just blacked out his name from the doors. Uh, Jim Morrison, lead singer of the doors. He died of a drug overdose because he was an idiot. Um, uh, they uh, they moved his grave like three times, and he's in a he's in a uh, uh, a cemetery in Paris, and people like pil- a pilgrim there. They go to see his grave, and like apparently, really weird. Like uh, people like there's been a bunch of people that go and and like not to face well the face I guess like there's a bunch of graffiti and stuff that people do. I don't know why exactly it is. I don't know the story behind, but like people go like make like trips with intent to go. To Jim Morrison's grave in France. It's like, why? Yeah, like, why? But why? but people do, and that's not unreal. So anyway, going back to the point of the story is, going to check out historical graveyards is not... It's not an uncommon it's thing. It's not an uncommon thing. So that, I, yeah, I don't like that meme because it's not, it's it's just very uh, based in, in falsities. Yeah. Also, there's um, there's been a lot of, like, back in, like, I think it was, like, 2020, some people went down... And it was like a company, and they had salvaged a chunk of the Titanic to go put it in a museum. And, like, they were they were theorizing ways to pull the whole Titanic out. Sure. But most people said, don't actually do that because there's a lot of people there. And I it's think not there's the rules. R- like, there's, there's, like, ocean, like, a, like, mariner rules on that. Like, um, if a bunch of people are in it when the ship goes down, you're supposed to leave it down there. Like, yeah, it's like, not. It's, I don't know exactly why the rule is that way, but that's one of those. I think like any ocean going vessel that ends up. I think planes count too. Like if a plane yeah. falls into the ocean with like people in it, Bermuda Triangle, that right. type of stuff. You leave it down there if it's once it's settled. I guess I don't yeah. know the rules, uh, but yes, I've heard that as well. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, that's uh, Elon Musk fight and the. I don't understand the people that Rich are people. celebrating death. Like again, you know, I don't know. I think there is a there is an issue there there especially here in, in the United States, but I think worldwide. But I think there is an issue with the growing gap and how many people are so ridiculously wealthy. And I think there's an issue with the ridiculously wealthy people who have no qualms about flaunting it in certain ways. And I understand why people are angry with rich people. I get that. Yeah. Um, but I don't get. I just I'm never going to understand people celebrating somebody else's death. You know. I'm never. I don't care who it is, personally, even if it's some multi-convicted murderer who's getting sentenced to death by the state, you know, and they're going to get they they because this is the punishment for their crimes. I'm still not going to be like, yay, that person's dead. That's just not how. That's not that's, what you. There's no person that I'm going to I'm going to be excited about. Maybe that'll change. I don't know, but currently I don't see. You know, like I didn't like Osama bin Laden. Well, you don't know. You're too, you are not alive yet, but um. I learned it in class. You know, the Saddam and the Osama bin Laden one. It's like, okay, I'm glad you found him. I'm glad that that person is not out in the world doing the crazy things that they're doing anymore. Yeah. But I'm not excited that they're dead. It doesn't please me that they're dead, even though they killed tons of Americans and whatever. Yeah. So um, I wanted to ask you, since I got you, and since I know I have teachers that listen, how this summer school, I'm sorry, summer learning camp, we're not saying summer school, uh, how this summer learning camp is going, went, yeah, for I, you. I get what you mean. Uh, it was it was okay. Like, I liked how many like breaks and stuff that you had because it seemed like it was super low key. Yeah, one of the things I really really didn't like it was like full of all the bad kids that were like really really had to go there because their grades were terrible. Right, that's one of the things I'm curious about, and I I I need to try to see if I can't get an administrator from Knox County schools in to talk about it. I'm curious, like the, the whole third graders thing aside, cause there's a bunch of third graders that had to, because of TCAP stuff. I don't know. You heard about that. Yeah. Um, but outside of the third graders, how many kids optionally, I guess just period, how many kids optionally took it? I mean, not option to you, option to me, the parent, like, but how many, th- how, like how many kids you said there are 17 in your class? Uh, no, there was like for all of seventh grade, which was us there was like 40 kids and it's split between it's split between four teachers which real realistic it would be 10 for each teacher but for our class it was like six 
And is every- it because the, uh, a lot of kids weren't coming that were supposed to be there? Yeah. So you had 10 or so in your class, but every day two, yeah. th- the, the two to five wouldn't show up? Yeah, the like full amount that was supposed to be there was like 56 or something. Okay. And your class had to end up having that, whatever. So I, I don't know. Like, cause, okay, so out of the six or seven that you saw in there regularly, were all of them kids that you got the impression had to be there? Like, didn't have a choice? This was No, a- there was – there were only – so in my classes, there was only, like, I think one person who physically had to be there. Everybody else was optional because okay. um, I asked them – I asked a lot of them, do you – are you, like, forced to be here because you have ter- – like, not asked them. I was like – as a joke, I went up to them and said, you're probably being forced to be here because you have terrible grades because they're like my friends, a right. handful of them. And I was and they're and they're like, no, I we had because all of us had very, very similar grades. It was like B's and C's. And they were like, no, my parents just opted me in to be here because. I Because, again, like I, I've said this before on the show and I've told you this directly and I want to be I, I like I and I pulled your brother side of that. Like before we started this, I was very clear. I tried to be very clear with you about it. Yeah. And I think you understood what I was trying to say is that this is not a punishment. Yeah. This is not because you're dumb. This is because everybody like everybody. is behind from pandemic stuff. Mm-hmm. And there's there is a program in play to help everybody get caught up to where they oh, air quotes should be with the uh you got to use the, like nothing. The, yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. That's why I don't like that mic stand. Um but should be a an opportunity to help kids get caught up, and I'm surprised how few parents took it up. That's yeah. kind of where I'm at on it, and that's what I wanted to make sure you guys understood is that this wasn't a punishment. It wasn't because you're dumb. It wasn't because your grades were particularly bad. It was because I believe that the entire nation of students is behind because of pandemic stuff, mm-hmm. and this program, although not super heavy or hardcore or anything is was available to kind of help catch up some of that lost year and a half or so yeah and so you know we didn't do it last summer even though we were we had the option because we're coming out of all that craziness and we needed a break yeah but we decided that pretty early last year that if it's available we're going to take advantage of it because i think i think you are struggling because i think the school system is behind they haven't adjusted as far as what they're teaching to where you guys are at because you guys are all behind. Yeah. But that also brings into question and something I don't know the right answer to is that, well, if there's a standard that you're supposed to be at when you graduate high school, you have to be where you're supposed to be in the different levels. So how do we get caught up? And so, you know, to me, they're going to keep, so next year you're, or you are now officially a seventh grader. So in August, September, whatever you'll be in seventh grade, they're going to teach what they teach seventh graders. Yeah. And hopefully with this little bit of summer stuff, you'll be a little bit more comfortable with that instead of being playing catch up the whole time. Yeah. What it was mainly, it was like, this is stuff that you're going to learn in seventh grade. It's just a pre, it's like a pre yeah. thing. Good. Good. I like that. I'm, I, I hope, I hope that it makes your whole seven, like I hope that this five weeks of hell for you makes your s- totality of seventh grade year be a little bit less difficult. Not yeah. not difficult at all, but a little bit more comfortable. Not as not not as stress inducing, and you feel better about where you are inside of what's going on. Yeah. that's my hope. What do you think about year round school? That's something I've been pitching around. What, what What do you mean? So instead of taking three months off in the summer, you take a month off in the summer, a month off in the fall, and a month off in the spring. Oh, oh like oh no! I already I think I told you that idea. It was like, why doesn't the school year start whenever the new year? physically starts i don't know that's I, a good question well i know the answer i mean the answer to that is, is farms so when the school systems started getting started most of the students were were farm families and the summer is what the most what we what we use as summertime is the most is the most time for farming right is the most uh like laborious time of farming and so if you're in a farm family i don't care if you're 13 or 7 or whatever you're out on the farm working all yeah. summer and then when it got into fall, the farm work slowed down, and that's why they did school that way. And there are some places, yeah. like out in the Midwest and stuff, that that's still true. Not much, but there are some fa- family farms that still operate that like, the kids are out there working. They're out there chasing cattle around. Or, like Alabama or something? Like, not not most of it, but like... I wouldn't say Alabama. I'd not say, like Alabama. You know what I mean? Like I'm, somewhere I'm, down there. thing like Texas is and Oklahoma is and Iowa is and mid, the, 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 the full set of the Midwest. I don't know. It's a good question. I don't know what kind of work... 
modern farm children do. You know, because but I I would say like if you get you get into the Oklahomas and the Texases where you're doing cattle ranching of some sort, you got to use the little. Well, there you go. You got it clicked. There you go. Yeah, that's um, so much more comfortable. Good. I tried to get you to do that beforehand, but you don't listen. Yeah, no, yeah, but I was, I was sitting down here. I know you're all slouchy. Um, but I think like you know, if you're doing cattle ranching and stuff like that, you're out riding the horse, keeping uh-huh. the cattle in the field, you have and the, moving you have whatever around dog and, breed you and need doing for thing, that. chasing around. Yeah, all that kind of stuff. Chasing freaking like gerbils or something. Yeah, gerbils or something. So that I don't know. <laughs> anyway, that's the that, my that's my understanding of the history. It is that's why we do summer the way we do it. And like you know, farming and stuff. But that's but again, that's back in the day when down. kids. Can I get this angle down? I don't think so. I'll just leave it up here. Okay. Um, that's when kids were more kids were working in farms, and so now, but but again, now that kids aren't working in farms, why we, are we still using a farm calendar for school? Because I feel like I feel like I know the answer as well. Because everybody's gotten so used to the regular just like this time this time yeah all I this mean, type of stuff and I, there's about there's some value to it like we did our our family vacation and you know my sister and her family who live in a completely different state and go to a completely different school system we used to, we, we could, have we still have the same summer right we could still schedule a big family thing and not have to worry about pulling anybody out of school because yeah. everybody's available so i get it um I understand parts and pieces of it, but I think one of the pro- one of the problems I think is is, and I know you've experienced it, is the first month of school mm-hmm. is kind of recapping what you did last year, getting you kind of like, back in mode, and also waking you up from like right summer. from summer chill, and you got to get back into the routines of this is how we move from class to class, and this is how we treat our fellow students and stuff like that. Yeah, and it seems like well, maybe if we didn't do that super long break we wouldn't have as much of that makeup stuff because another thing and and again i want to ask you i did want to ask you about this um it seemed to me that the last couple of weeks of regular school for you was nothing yeah because it was yeah. and that bothers me that bothers me as a parent not that i want you to do more per se but when we're constantly behind and all this different parts and pieces and we're taking i don't know 10 15 school days and doing absolutely nothing with them because yeah it's like, the end of the year like i understand like the last couple days getting all the books and cleaning out your backpacks and lockers or whatever it is and all that crap you guys don't lose lockers i know yeah but you know the last couple days being that kind of not a lot of officially anything important going on i understand that like because mm-hmm. what was it the, the end of the year was a wednesday and so like that monday tuesday half day wednesday being not very educational Okay, I can get on board with that. Yeah, but, but like not the last like whole week or something. Right. The, you were like you said you did next like you did one thing the week before. Yeah. And then the week before that you said you only had one or two things of any consequence. And so it's like 10 12 days of school that you're doing nothing at and it's like, well, cuz I, I again, I know why they do it. I don't know why they do it that way, but I know why they have to do it that way because the state mandates that you have 180 days of class. Oh, you wait. Um this is, I reminded myself of this. Um, so you know, like the solar project and stuff. Sort of. Yeah. Um. So our school did the like solo thingy. You had to go do a solo, like. Oh, for band. Yeah, yeah. for band. And Michael had completely f- forgotten about it, and had just he hadn't turned it in yet. He still had like a D in the class, which was still passing. And I was like, how. My, my my I got a D in band in college, so I can't push too much. But the only the only thing you got graded on in band in college was uh, being there and being on time. So were you? And I had some issues with uh, that's. I think because I, I think because like now I'm 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 crazy like maybe to a fault the other way on making sure we're on time for everything. Yeah, because because um, I made you not not to be mean or anything. Whatever, hit it. But uh, you'll you'll be like. Really, really like upset if we're like two, three minutes late to something. I mean, it depends what it is, but yeah. It, to be there's well, one there's uh, on, a, on a broader level. To be, it's disrespectful to who you're going to yeah. or what you're going to. You know, things happen, and I probably don't need to react and freak out the way I do. I'll I agree, hundred percent. But at the end of the day, it's like you know, if I tell you, hey, at two o'clock, I'm, I'll meet you here. And then you meet me. And then like, you're there at two o'clock, and it's two fifteen when I show up. 
I just wasted 15 minutes of your time. Why? Because, because I couldn't be somewhere when I said I was going to be there. Yeah. And I think that's disrespectful. And the, and the inverse being the same thing. Like one of the things that drives me more nuts than anything is when you get the cable guy and you say, Hey, or like we were with the computer thing, right? Yes. I've been working with tech support and I said, they, you know, they, they went back and forth through their little text messaging thing and we couldn't figure out the problem. So they said, text us your number and a good time to call and we'll call you. So I did. They didn't call me that time. I messaged him again and I get, I went from giving him a specific time to a window of time. And I'm pretty sure they called me back at, uh, they called me yesterday at like six o'clock while I was at work. What? And, uh, and I was like, I can't do this right now. I'm super busy. I'm at work. Um, but then, uh, they called me, I think they called me at like 1130 the night they were supposed to call me at three in the afternoon. And I told them I could go till about nine 30. Uh, like when I text them and after, after the three o'clock came and went and they didn't call me at like three 30, I text them through the thing. I said, Hey, I'm around till about nine 30. Um, if you want to call me before nine 30, I got a time where I can go get on that computer and see if we can't figure this thing out. Mm-hmm. And then I think they called me at like 10 30, 11 30 that night. And it's like, guys, come on. Yeah. Like, I mean, I'll- they're in Minnesota, so they're on central time. So 10 30 would be nine 30 to them, but they're still calling at the very end of it. It's like, I'm trying to do stuff. Like, yeah. I have other things to do than to wait on that phone call. And so if you say you're going to call me at a certain time or you say you're going to be here at a certain time, I expect it to, to, to happen. And, and if it's going to upset me if you're late, then I would assume that it's going to upset you if I'm late. And so I do everything I can to avoid that upset. Yeah. Also, with the, like, repair place, they were, like – so the first time we took in – to do like the yo, well, the other repair me? place, right? Those guys have other issues. Yeah, but like the first time we took it in, we were like, "Yo, tell us the problem, don't fix it." And then they, we told them the problem. No, we didn't tell them. The problem. Well, I told them the solution I wanted, and then they didn't do that either on the second time we went in. Yeah, and so I'm, I'm a little like, yeah, I'm very upset with their service because it's like, hey, all right, so we don't know what's going on exactly. Figure it out yeah. for us, hey, and. They tell us what the problem is, and they're wrong. We make the we we fix what they told us it was, and Didn't it still work. doesn't work. So I bring it in, and I say, "Hey, your original solution was wrong. This is what we did. Here's the part that we took out because you told us it was broken. It turns out it's not. Put it back in. Figure out what the actual problem is and fix it." And instead, they left the new part in, which is money to me, and half fixed it because they put a Windows they put a, a version of Windows on there with no key. And now we can't log into Windows, so we have a working computer that we can't use. Yeah. And so now I've got to spend more money on a new version of Windows because this other group won't call me back in the time to figure out how to get the Windows key off of the motherboard. Yeah. It's a mess. I'm very... I'm, also, I'm, I was... I got like... The, um. So the first time we took it in there, it took them like a week and like three, four days to do... Nothing. Yes. All <laughs> they They tested all of my parts. They didn't even test like... It, it just really gets me upset. Right. Well, because what they did, what what they did was they ran a, a set of diagnostics, and the the diagnostic for the hard drive, which ended up being the problem, was just a does this thing work or not diagnostic. And since they said yes, it works, they moved on to the next thing. And they didn't. They and didn't. if I think well, I think the idea is that if if all the other things work correctly, then this last thing has to be the problem. Yeah. Because there's no real way to test that last thing for issues and so it's like well everything else works so this must be it well everything else didn't work because that wasn't it and so i I, we will not be spending another dime with those guys ever yeah i'm not even going to buy a phone cord from those fucks pardon my language in front of the children people (laughs) um so i'm yeah i'm very it's it's i it's it's crap it's real real crap Mm -hmm. um like again popped into my head the Canada wildfires and like <laughs> what you're like me, man. I get it. I do the same thing. It's just like horses and puppies and dogs and death. I don't know where I thought, why I thought about death, but I'm thinking about death now. Anyway, go ahead. Um, but the Canada wildfires. So Michael has an aunt that lives in New York and she sent him a photo of what it looks like out there. And it's just like, it's like Mad Max and shit. Yeah, it's just orange air. And um, so my favorite YouTuber guy, he also lives in Canada. Well, he lives in Canada, and he sent uh, – he did a community post 
saying what it looks like outside of his house. And it's just this like really deep orangey red. And it's, it's just a problem. Like, it's a big problem. And it's going to cause more problems and it's not going to get better. And that's what sucks. This is the world we live in and it's going to get worse, not better. In, in that sense, not like the world is, I don't know, uh, to get super deep and philosophical on it. It's like the question is, what is the experience of life? Like, what is it? What's it supposed to be? What do you want it to be? That kind of thing. And to me, it's people and it's the interaction of, of people um, and the joy that people and, and activities with other people bring. Um, uh-huh. And so a consequence of our advancement as humans is the destruction and disgusting that we've turned the planet into. Yeah. Because like it's, it's just what we do. We, I, some of I, I, yeah, it is. We, it is a, we, and we are part of a, uh, but it's a, it's a, it's a combination of a lot of different things. And we certainly have played a role in it. The question is how much can we feasibly do to stop it from getting worse or get it better without destroying everything else about existence. And, and, and that's, that's why I, I kind of put it that way. Like, sure, we can. We could get back to, like, a green planet that works as a planet better, but that puts us as humans, like, back in the Stone Age, living in caves and, yeah, you know, all the things that make life, to me, like, and I'm a Stone Age kind of person. I like to go sleep in the woods by myself under a tree, you know? Like, I enjoy that. I don't want to do that all the time. Yeah, like... You know, and so the, the the way you get to this green earth thing is going to be either either phenomenally expensive that nobody can afford, and, and I mean nobody collectively in governments and stuff like that, yeah. or we all just stop doing anything and we just, you know, live off grubs and revert back to being and revert cavemen. back to being cavemen. And, and, and I don't think that's going to happen. So we so, have to we have to work with what we have and do the best we can with what we have and put forth effort to try to be less damaging. But at the same time, there's a, there's 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 a trade off that we have to accept, mm-hmm. and it sucks, but it's true. And uh, mm-hmm. there was like Mr. Beast did the team trees and team C's things, which are like very little because twenty million trees and thirty million pounds of trash out of the ocean. That's that is a very big number, but like it's small compared to what the totality. Sure, yeah. Small compared to but the I think, big total. I think the important part about the Mr. B stuff is it is that it's an awareness thing. People know about it. People are thinking about it. Uh-huh. That's good. And, you know, it's I like I like Mr. Beast a lot. I know I've talked about it before. I think that I think that his popularity shows a decency. Like he like yeah. he is my hope for your generation. Like that's the that's the bottom line for me. Like yeah. him being as popular as he is is my hope that you guys aren't completely crazy. He he also he uses his fame in like actually good ways. He does good like, stuff. Uh, yeah, and, it, but 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 the fact that he does that and it makes him more popular, I think, is what is what is encouraging to me. Because he could do that, and that's fine, and whatever. And if it didn't, if it didn't change the needle, that's still great. But the fact that he does it and people like him more because he does it, and maybe that's part of why he does it. But the, the, just the that circular idea of doing good things brings him good attention, which makes him want to do more good things. I don't care which one's first. I don't care if he's doing it because people like him for doing it or because he wants to do it internally. I don't care. He's doing good things and he's popular for it, yeah. which means that you guys aren't psychopaths mm-hmm. completely. <laughs> not not that you're not somewhat psychopathic, but it's 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 it it, 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 it gives me hope for your generation. It really does because I'm scared. I'm scared of what you're going to grow up to be. Not you as an individual, but, but like, like I don't know what is a what are you going to do with your life. We can't all be YouTube creators. You might be one of them, and I hope you can pull it off. I really do. I'm sitting here doing a podcast. Of course, I'm 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 on board with playing the game, but trying to want to be a internet sensation or whatever. Yeah. Um, but like, I'm scared of what work's going to be like for you. Like, I'm, I don't know what you're going to do with your life. If you can pull it off, I'm I'm I would support it. I'm behind you, and I'll do whatever I can to help. Uh, Vortex, whatever. What is it again? G tag, not tag. Vortex yeah, space G. T. T. Um. You know, I hope you can. I hope you can, because it's a cool thing to do, and I hope you follow the Mr. Beast model and do good things with the fame you get out of it if you can pull it off. Um, but in the more realistic kind of whatever approach of things, it's it's not particularly likely that that's going to be your career. Mm-hmm. So, what is your career going to be? And I'm just like with the Chat GPTs and the other AI stuff that's going on. Yeah, the, okay. Like, have a- you heard the Drake thing? Did you hear the story about the Drake songs? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Well, no. Which story? That like somebody. Went to one of the chat GPT things and put in, make me a Drake song about this. 
and it was and it like, did, and they released it, and people thought it was a Drake song. Yeah, but, like, like also the like the voice app things with like people who like it, like it's scary how like good they've gotten the things, like. You can sound exactly like Elon. Oh yeah, the deep fake stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like it's just. Yeah, I mean, I've I've put enough content on my podcast at this point that if somebody wanted to, they could record me saying anything they want, and it would sound exactly like me. Yeah, and that's scary. It's scary for a lot of reasons. Like we have enough problems in politics and government and stuff like that, and people trusting each other in the world at large. Yeah, and now it's I could do whatever I want. I could make I can make Joe Biden say that he kicks puppies in their sleep. Yeah, and and you can also like other world leaders can make Joe Biden say like, I don't like this right pe- these people because whatever right, and for for whatever nefarious purposes somebody might want to do it, they could be like, they can get they could have Putin saying that he's going to bomb Washington D.C. and then and then and it's going to be so good that people are going to hear it and be like, oh shit. That's actually going to happen. happen. And then World War Three is going to happen right. because it's, people are being dumb. They're not being dumb. No, no, they're, no. They're, they're trusting what they see and hear. And the technology is so good that it's it's understandable why you would trust it. Also, like with the chat GPT thing, one of the memes is like, um, so it's like, is my, are you guys working on my heart transplant? And then it's, no, I learned it from chat GPT doctors in like the year 2040 or something sure because it's gonna be to where they're just gonna use chat gpt how to do open heart surgery and it's well gonna- i mean what, where at, at what point do they do what does it go open heart surgery and the robot arms do what they do and chat gpt does all the research and tells the arms what to do yeah and you don't even have a person in play plus chat GPT, which could be a cool thing honestly if it's good at it for positive ends yeah. But it's all these negative ends that are scary to me. At what point, like, you know, not to get all Terminator on it, but like at what point do the does AI actually realize that we are pointless? Elon, Elon put this perfectly. So if you code a robot to make the world a better place. Um, He's going to kill all humans. It's, <laughs> it's going to eventually learn that we're the problem and it's going to do whatever it can to get to its solution even if that's eradicating all humans. Sure. There's a bunch of movies about it. <laughs> There's I a mean, whole bunch yeah. of sci-fi movies about the, the the apocalyptic future of the robots taking over and killing all the people. The Matrix, um, iRobot, which as much as I like to hate on Will Smith, especially right now, iRobot is a fantastic movie. I Yeah, I watched a recap on it, and it's it was really funny. It's a good movie. It's a, it's a good movie, and I think it's, it, it is as, – as, as this stuff is becoming actually real – where like back when that movie came out, it was like theoretical and people were thinking about it and talking about it. But now that some of the parts and pieces are getting real, yeah, like, it's like, this totally, it totally makes sense. Like, like the logic Boston dynamics. Yeah. Like, the logic is there. Like, yeah, people make those videos where it's like, it's the, have you seen, you've seen the fake Boston dynamic videos Yeah, where they make like the robot soldier and yes, they're, they're yeah, doing yeah. the test thing and they're like hitting it with sticks and they're pushing it down while it's yeah. shooting the gun and it keeps like doing what it's doing. And then it gets, and then finally it gets mad and turns around and starts killing yeah, them. Yeah. And one in like, I, I I'm subscribed to those people. They're called like Corridor Crew. Um, they they do like a lot of mocap stuff. And what it was? I'm sorry, I'm old. What is mocap? Uh, motion, motion capture. capture. Okay, never mind. I get it. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they do a bunch of mocap stuff. Yeah, and they like had the robot 3D model. And one of the scenes was they release bees onto the robot, and it was supposed to like, it was supposed to like tell people that hey this is a joke and people in the comments of the video are like oh my god i cannot believe that they actually really made this robot and then the the people will like comment no it's all fake because they released bees onto a robot that's not how it works yeah i get bees wouldn't attack a robot the only like the only thing that that gives me hope is that like like what's the motivation like like you got to figure out what the motivation is for the robot like why would the robot want to kill all the humans if yeah. you if it's programmed to save the planet then yes that, then it's totally yeah, going to do it the... but it when cuz again like to me at what point does chat gpt start rewriting its own code it it people have made it already start rewriting its but, own code but people have made it yeah. when does it start doing it on its own accord that's the difference yeah when does it just say you know what i was looking at myself and I see some things in here that don't really make sense. I'm going to fix them. And, and then, then what happens? And then what happens? And like, you know, once it starts, once it figures out how to do it on its own, where does it evolve to? 
the thing to me that's the, the the hope that I have in it is that it's never going to involve it, it. It I don't know how it can evolve the 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 humanity, the internal drive, the want to be anything. Because realistically, it's like you know we as humans have been, have evolved in this whole like, we need to eat and find a safe place to sleep and be comfortable those kind mm-hmm. of things and so you know so that's hardwired into us at the end of the day you're going to like when it comes when it when it comes down to it and you're hungry you're going to figure out what you have to do to eat yeah you're going to do whatever it has to to eat well a computer's not going to be hungry yeah a computer's not going to have want to procreate that's something that is ingrained in us as humans is that we want to make the next generation Mm-hmm. Um, some people choose not to, and some people rationalize it out and all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, something in us says you need to make another human. Yeah. And you need to make sure that human survives and no, don't kill them yourselves and get them to adulthood. What's the one rule we have in this house? Grow up and do not die. No, that's my job. Oh. The one rule is don't die. You're yeah. not allowed to die. Um, and so um, all that... All that, all that, like the, the silly little simplification, stupid things that I throw out. Hate is a waste of energy. One rule: don't die. You, my, I have one job, kind of thing. Yeah. That's all based on like the, the, there's a human drive. I can't help it. Uh-huh. Those things are ingrained into me because they're ingrained into my dad and his dad and his dad before him, all the way back to when we were cavemen. And so, uh-huh. and that's the one saving thing about the AI that I, that that I yeah. that makes me a little less afraid of it because it doesn't have that. It can't have that. I don't know that it ever could. The only thing that I think it could develop over time is the want to stay alive. Yeah. Um. So, um. Somebody put it really, really well. Eventually, ChatGPT is going to figure out how to create itself a physical form, whether that's like Ultron from freaking the Marvel movie. See, but I don't know. That's what I'm saying, though. It's like, like, what's the point? Like, what, why would it want to have a body if it's Ultron or just some robot or if it's a like an R2-D2 looking box on wheels kind of thing rolling around? Yeah. Like, why would it want that? It could figure it out, no question. Yeah, but why would it want that? Right. Why would it want the ability? Like, I could see it trying to figure out a way for it never to lose power That's- as far as always being on and never have to worry about losing access to itself. I could see that being a thing that it would develop over time. And so yeah. it would figure out a way to, you know, it change po- the power grid or get us in, like, you know, get us into, like, solar and wind power and, and, and or, or some other options that no matter what happens, it's always going to be on. What, what it's going to eventually do is it's going to take, it's going to, wow, uh, it's going to. Wow what? Um, okay, so. what Did it you would, just blow up your own brain? No, no, I, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh. <laughs> okay, but what, what it's eventually going to do is it's going to find, it's going to figure out how to download itself to a hard drive somewhere that it cannot be, like, it will right. not be deleted it, from. It inaccessible will never... to the outside, from the outside, yeah. I could see that, and then that gets the physical form thing, and then it will put the, it'll put the air, the, what do they call it in, in the intelligence community? I see what you're saying. Yeah, I get it. It'll put itself into a box in a corner somewhere, and it will have access when it wants to. To, to move br- itself. To, to, and to move itself and to bridge into the internet, but it will have a, a hard line between it and the internet. They call that uh, air gap in like uh, intelligence, like mm-hmm. uh, FBI and CIA. So like stuff that's super, super top secret is on a computer that is not hooked up to the internet. Yeah. Like, um, and so if you, if you need to work on it, you get on that computer and you work on it and then you turn it off, but there's no internet. So it can't yeah. be accessed. It from can't be anybody. accessed from anybody. Right. Yeah. Which is what, um, specific high security prisons will do. It's only access to power, no internet. So you can't physically get any, like you can't information or anything, information or anything on it. And they use that for like the grids for all of the cell doors and all that type sure. of stuff. Yeah. Because you, right. You wouldn't want a hacker to get into it and, and release open all the, cell all doors the prisoners right. in the middle of the night. Yeah, I think that's. I think that that makes sense. All right, I see where you're going with that. All right, I agree. What else you got? Anything else you want to talk about? Mm-hmm. I, 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 I mean, have we said we do like 20 minutes, and we we're 45 in. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, trans. Okay, so Transformers, like the CGI that they do, like CGI has gone so far in, like the past. How long has CGI been around? Like 20, 30 years? Sure. I don't know. I don't, I don't, say. I, I don't know either. Um, but it would be so like CGI has gotten like so advanced to where you'll take your computer, you'll leave it on rendering for whatever you're trying to render because 
what rendering is is it's like materializing it making the final scene in all cgi and then you'll come back after like a day or two and then you'll see this like beautiful fight scene that has like sparks and everything and it looks amazing and like computers have gone from it takes you like a month to render that scene to taking you a day you know we have one of the world's largest computers supercomputers right off the street maybe i don't know yeah up in oak ridge it's like it's oh yeah it's at that level of classification we don't know the specifics on it but it, but as as i understand it at least it is like top five fastest computers on the planet some like which makes these computers that we have at the house look like jokes yeah like the fastest computer that you can physically buy it's called like the orion x v2 and what it is is it's like massive case like the case is like freaking the size of that trash can it has two 4090s uh, it has two 4090 ti's in it or whatever like the best graphics you put whatever the best graphics card on the market is into it you put it in there twice so it has two of them the best cpu in there twice and then like the best ram i think it's like 432 gigs or something it's a lot yeah like it's some like crazy numbers and then you hook it all up to um, the best router and not over Wi-Fi. Uh, you use whatever the cord's called. Cat6 or optical? Uh, whichever one plugs into it. I don't remember. Well, like Cat6 is what runs from your room to, to the router. Yeah, that. Optical is what runs from the router to AT&T. Optical's faster. What, whichever one. Because it's the speed of light. Yeah, whichever one of the two is faster. And it's like it, it's a dual PC build. So you can build a second computer inside of the case with your first computer. So people have built like two compu- two of the super computer things. And it's like it's unbelievably fast. There's a hardware level that that gets to the hardware level where I don't understand it anymore. Yeah, like <laughs> it, it's it's it just doesn't make very much sense to me. And OK, so really quick thing for it. So power supplies are like for your um iMac or wait what is it iMac it's a Mac mini yeah close enough I wasn't going to correct you but go ahead um for that it has a power supply we'll say just for the example it has like a power supply of four that's obviously not what it is and we'll say that like my computer has like a power supply of like we'll say like four as well like the the Orion whatever I said it was it has, like, a power supply of, like, 12 or, like, probably even higher just right. so it can power the system. Right, because there's so much stuff going on in there. It probably has – it's probably air and water cooled and – Yeah, it's all the, the cool stuff. Yeah. Some, somebody um, – so somebody lives in, like, way up in, like, Iceland – not Iceland, uh, Greenland, where it's, like, really, really cold and stuff up there. And what they did is they had built their computer – best stuff in there it's i th- it's not the orion thing it's like some of the best stuff but not that and they had put it they had put the computer outside of their house right cuz it's cold cause as shit it's cold like and it kept the cpu and gpu at like negative 5 degrees for right. both of them which was which is insane cuz that's like insane speeds for overclocking right cuz when you're getting there normally you get hot 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 like burn your skin touch hot. yeah it gets like incredibly hot yeah it's pretty crazy all right man well i appreciate you st- stopping in and uh partaking of a show with me that's fun already the other kids can come we're gonna transfer her on the two <laughs> all right we're back and i got the other kid we got Lil E. that was biggie earlier Lil E. are you yeah. okay with that nickname or are you making me change it again no, that's the nickname I like. Okay, I don't it's, you don't like Easy. I thought Easy is so much cooler. Okay. No, it's not. You do you, bro. I'm. I, I will. I respect the, the the preference. So. Okay. Okay. Uh. What's up? Not much. I was. Li- I just saw on like my s- game news things inside my game. Inside my game console, that like uh, a DLC to uh, Pokemon Scarlet happening very soon, and like 
downloadable okay. content? Yeah, I already bought the DLC, as you know, a while ago, actually. It's just now coming out. But, yeah, in 90 days, the first wave of Jeez, that's DLC so far away. is happening, and then in winter, the second wave is happening. 90 days from now is winter. No fall. Um, so, earlier this week was the first official day of summer. Summer lasts for 90 days, so it'll be like the very end of fall. So, let's see here. July. I mean, it'd still be fall. August, September. It'll be the end of September. Yeah. Like, Which I guess that's technically fall. You're right. See, You're right. And that's what the game says too. <laughs> uh, but You're right. I'm sorry. Yeah. So, hey, okay. So I want to start here and then we can wander off into other random stuff because okay. I, to- I talked to your brother about this too. Um, Is it? What? What? Summer stuff. Summer summer learning camp. What your summer experience school? is like. In, it's summer learning camp or summer school if you want to call it that. But I'm <laughs> not calling it, it that. Su- it's summer learning camp. I call it summer school. Okay, you call it summer school then. How was your experience with summer stuff? So far, it's been, like, fine. Because, like, the people who, like, are there, they're very chill and are cool and stuff. Do you feel like you got anything out of it educationally? Like, I mean... Most definitely on the vision, but that's about it. <laughs> on the vision? Yeah. What do you mean on the vision? The vision. Oh, the vision. I'm sorry. I thought you said the vision, and I was like... No! <laughs> sorry. It's, anyway, good. I'm good. I'm glad that you feel like you got something out of that. That was the point. Mm-hmm. Um, so I asked your brother, too. So he, he'd made jokes a couple times during the process that he thought that most of the kids there were bad kids. I'm not bad kids. That's not the right way to say it. But kids that either had either really struggled in class or had behavioral issues and missed a lot of missed a lot of school time and that's why they were there. Mm. How how many kids were in your room? Like 12 in total, but yesterday the last day I went there was 7 in total. Okay, so out of the 12 that are normally there, how many of them if you happen to ask or talk to them about it, how many of them like had to be there or how many of them had their parents told them they had to be there? You know what I'm saying? The difference? Like, had to be there because the school said so, or had yeah, to be there because... Yeah, yeah, I, I get that. I don't know, though. And also, some people were actually from a different school entirely. Yeah, they didn't... Uh, not every single school uh, had like, it. It's called, like, Aquavia Academy or something like that. Uh, hmm. I'm not familiar with that. Neither am I, but... but the, and there's one kid from that class... From Aquavia that... Or whatever it's called. That's what I'm pretty sure it's called. We'll, we'll stick with it. We'll figure yeah. it out later. Um, I'm not going to say his name on this, but like... Uh, he's like... He's not exactly like that cool. Like some people have made jokes about him, but I don't. And like he's not really that fun to play with because like he always takes the overpowering role or like... Hey, I'm going to do this because nah, 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 nah. And that's why I don't really like him. Okay. And he's in my class. I mean, we've had that. That, that has been a, at some. Uh, and it's the, been the, a the recurring per- theme. Right. The person, the person changes, but it tends to be consistent. That's. Yeah. That's life, buddy. Sometimes people just mm-hmm. suck and you have to deal with sucky people. I know. And that sucks. Mm-hmm. Um, but the question is, how do you deal with sucky people? Uh, for him, I really just like don't l- listen to him or like really talk to him. Like I talk to him sometimes, but not that much. Do you think it would? Potentially make him less sucky if you maybe actually took some time to talk mm. to him and hang out with him and maybe ex- talk to him about how his behaviors and certain activities make it really unfun to play with him. Uh, I mean, it's not really your job. I'm not saying you should or shouldn't. I'm just saying. I mean, like, I've already given mul- given him multiple chances. Okay. And he has uh, not took them well, so that's why I don't really play uh, or then talk that, to Then him. That's, that's a wise way to do it. You, you tried. And if they're not going to put forth the effort to be a good play partner, then you avoid. Yeah. 
It sucks, but it is. Yeah. So, <laughs> you got stuff out of summer school. Mm-hmm. That's good. I'm glad. And again, now to repeat for the record, you were there because your mom and I chose you for you to be there. Yeah, I not know. because you're dumb. I know. Not because you did bad. Not because you're a bad kid. I know that. <laughs> It's important that you hear this and you know it and you know it, know it. And it's not, I'm not trying to bother you by repeating it. Oh, okay. I just want to make sure that you know that because I told you I had a complex about it when I was a kid and I still don't know the truth about it. Yeah. So anyway, what else is going on, buddy? I mean, not that much. I got, um, I got the new uh, Zelda game that you know. I do know. And I've uh, beaten the game, and I got Majora's Mask in it, as well as a bunch of cool other things like the Hylian Shield. And for some reason, the Hylian Shield is so easy to get. You literally just go to the back of Hyrule Castle, and... It's just sitting there? And it, you, like, either defeat a boss... Or you just run away from it by climbing up and stuff, and then you light a giant torch, and it, and then a chest just pops up out of nowhere, and, and then boom, Hylian shield. Well, how'd you how'd you figure out how to do it? Um, I don't know. I was just like exploring around Hyrule Castle. Well, that's the hard part is figuring it out. Not that the thing, not that the task is hard. It's just figuring out what the task yeah. is. But for some reason, like it's so easy to find out how to get Maj- or his mask. You just go under a um, fighting arena and kill a few enemies, and then boom, you get it. But those enemies are some of the strongest enemies in the game. They are uh, Lynels, which if you don't know what they are, they're like horses, like minotaurs, aren't those like the... Horse people, yeah. Yeah. But like, they're super strong because their horns, they are like literal blades. No way. And like, anytime you get hit by them... You lose heart, so you can't actually heal back unless you have food that gets rid of, like, the corruption heart damage or whatever it is. It seems pretty intense. Mm-hmm. And, like, it's, uh, but, uh, okay, so it's just... so much work just for Majora's Mask, which all it does is it makes you not be able to fight. I mean, no, not be able... Uh, makes it to where low-level enemies won't attack you. But that's kind of useless if you do defeat the, like, five lines. Right, which means you're capable of defeating low-level enemies. Yeah, and... Yeah, but... But, like, I cheated it so much. Because I found out, like, that you can get an ancient blade, and what it does is it literally just, like teleports any web any enemy to like boom so like say a boss was like standing there and then you hit them with like an ancient arrow for example they would just go get exploded and like they wouldn't drop loot but at the same time they'd be one shot killed so like i since i only had three ancient weapon ancient blades I put I killed the first two Lynels which are the easiest and then I just used the ancient ones to obliterate the rest so I can defeat some Lynels but only like blues and regular Lynels and then the rest I just cheated to get my doors I mean to get all super philosophical on it like the the, there, there is a a parallel of normalcy of being a human to that in that the game of life yeah you don't necessarily know what you're doing or how to do it part mm-hmm. the, the big part of the game is figuring out how to play yeah um and what you need to do moving forward because there's no rule book here there's no directions mm-hmm. and there's no cheat sheets so yes, you, you got to kind of figure it out so i think that's kind of cool that you've explored and you figured out but what i think is cool about the new generations game like that is that it's not fixed like old school games 
there was only one way to go through the gate. You could yeah. only go in a straight line, and you you beat this thing. You go here, you do that, mm-hmm. you go there, and then that's how you get to the end. Yeah, like I've played through all of um, like the original Mario game, mm-hmm. and literally all you did like the only differences between each world is what like blocks you broke, what question mark blocks you opened, right? Like and what cheats you did and stuff like that and it's like there's no difference between each game of that basically but like with the newer games like tears of the kingdom right you can go anywhere and do anything and you can figure it out and there's a story but there's also all the side quests yeah and it's just your kind of your and again i think it's a good analogy for life in the sense that Mm -hmm. you know there is no predetermined story. There is no script that says this happens, then this happens, then this happens. It says, yeah. well, you know, you just work your way through it and you figure it out. Yeah, like, I've beaten the game and, like, it's crazy. Like, you need to defeat four very, well, like, two easy bosses, but then two stupidly hard bosses. And I've even refighted, um, one of the easy bosses and it actually got a lot harder hmm. and it got harder because um it's the way I, I was able to beat so easily the first time I fought it which that was literally the first like phenomenon I thought was because there was like walls around it like around the boss fight making sure that you could use the special ability of that area it's like a basically like you know how boulders like can roll and it hurt stuff Mm -hmm. basically the special ability is you can shoot a rock person and it can like hit things and it can break rocks and stuff so you had that the first time but not the second time you fought it yeah because the refights they're a lot harder because they're just like boss arena and boss not like the surroundings like the original okay. area i got it Th- that's cool i mean that, <laughs> that makes things difficult but that's cool and I, yeah. I and i will give you uh kudos as much as i'm not into the game personally per se i will give you kudos on your persistence i think you're just in general you are persistent about a thing if it's a thing you want to win or beat or do you will figure it out and you will mm-hmm. get it done like also, for the Pokemon game I was talking about, like the DLC, it's actually Scarlet and Violet. I don't know why I didn't say that earlier. All good. But, uh, um, that game, it's like, it does have very good open worldness and stuff like that, but at the same time, the story mode, like in that game, the story mode, it's a lot bigger than any other side things to do because once you beat the story mode which it's pretty easy to beat (laughs) and you basically can't you cannot refight the story mode fight so after you beat the story mode all you can really do is just catch pokemon and wait until the dlc that i was talking about that's kind of a bummer well and you can fight can you get online and fight your friends yeah, I can. I've fought my best friend multiple times. One time we did Greninja versus Greninja, same level but different. Like, s- but each of us had different strategies. Like they were both like level forty-seven or something, uh-huh. and they had different moves, and we had different strategies. And I won. Nice. And I thought it was really cool because like, w- the only difference is is. Like how we how play. you choose to fight them, right? Yeah, that's cool. That's super fun. Mm-hmm. But for the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, it like the story mode tells you like, hey, you should do this and this, and then beat the final boss. But there's still a ton more things to do instead of just like mess around with sticks until a DLC comes. Right. I get it. Because, like, there are special abilities like Ultra Hand and, like, Fuse, where you can fuse weapons together. Right, and you can Ultra Hand machines and... Yeah, like, I saw on YouTube Shorts the other day 
that someone created a literal tank. Nice. And I thought that was awesome. Like, whoa. <laughs> and it was like a tutorial on like how to build a tank. And I think that uh, there's a lot of games. I think that's one of the things about Minecraft that I like. And I think that's yeah. one of the things about Animal Crossing that I like. It is very... Open world. Open world, but also creative. You could you can make things exist. Yeah, you shape the world how you want your world to be. Yeah, I think that's super cool because... You know, like some of the Minecraft stuff is crazy. How much time? Yeah, spend. like the redstone builds. Like I can barely build a redstone, fun- like a functioning redstone door, and people can build literal houses that only have redstone as like their functions. Right. Like there's a YouTuber called Luke the Notable, and he is like. He had uh, Minecraft 100 Days on Creative, and that was basically just him learning how to, like, make bases and, like, use redstone. And so I think that's a really good idea for Minecraft if you need to, like, uh, like, if you need to learn how to make redstone stuff, just, like, Get redstone and go on a creative world and just right. and start just, building. Just stuff. start building stuff, and you figure out how to different things mm-hmm. go together. And I th- again, I think that's what's cool about it. Yeah. All right. So, um, well, last thing I want to talk about before we call the show is: so you're going into fifth grade. Yes. You excited about it? Uh, I am, but also I'm a bit scared. But big man on campus, <laughs> what are you scared about? I don't know. I'm mean, like, I've seen like the division. Like, especially with the start of summer school and what I did, I, like, wasn't able to do, like, any divisions before the time was up. And we had, like, five, ten minutes to do it. And so, but, like, and that's why I'm still scared. Because, like, what if I can't do the math and division and, like, those parts? Because, like... If I can't, then I'd fail, and I'd have to, like, do extra work to get better, and maybe I'd even need to get, like, a tutor or something, which I would not like. Ah. Well, you can... We can do some practice just here and there over the summer to keep it in the front of your brain. Okay. I'll think about it. And we can do some stuff to get you prepped. Because, I mean, again, I think if I understand the program correctly, most Mm -hmm. of what you did in summer school is what essentially is the first couple of weeks of fifth grade anyway. Yeah. So all of your f- friends that didn't do the summer school program are going to be not behind. Well, you're going to be a little bit ahead of them they, because yeah. you've had more practice than they are. And so the likelihood of you falling behind <laughs> is pretty low. Or at least for, and for the real, first real Realistically, when we did this same conversation a year ago and I said, you're going into fourth grade, what do you think about it? Pretty sure you said the same thing. Yeah. Now, how was fourth grade for you? It was... Honestly, easy. Exactly. Like, my least favorite parts, they were just because I don't like writing. And yeah. it was, like, reading and writing. Because, like, I love reading, but I very much dislike writing. Is it hand, the handwriting part or actually... Handwriting. Yeah. Like, typing that's, on that's, keys, that's, it's slow for me, but, like, it's right. you not don't necessarily... Have to, you don't have to worry about the uh, the M looking like an M or not. Yeah, like, also my U's, I make them look like V's. I don't know why. That's just how I, I mean, they're basically Right. A, a U and a V are the same. One's pointed, one's not. Yeah. Um, I get it. And you inherited some terrible handwriting practice from your mom and me. We both have terrible, terrible, terrible penmanship. Mm-hmm. Um, and you like, you have the struggle of being the minority of people out there that is left-handed. And so everything about yeah. the process is, is backwards to you. Also... Anyone who's watching this and are like, well, if someone left-handed opens the fridge door with their left hand, how would they open it? I just open it with my right hand. <laughs> like, that's the thing. We don't use our left hand for everything. We use our right hand sometimes, too. Right. I use <laughs> my left hand sometimes, even though I'm right-handed. Yeah. But, realistically, since the, so many more people are right-handed than left-handed, there are a lot of things that are built yeah, around like the right-handedness. Toys, school supplies, all yep. that. Scissors is like, one. Like, even yeah. pencils. Because, like, whenever you write uh, right-handed, you're writing it 
to your right hand. So right, you're you pulling. Don't, so you don't get like that yep. pencil stuff on your hand, and it's like, right, it's not necessarily. No, you're 100 percent because mm-hmm. the way you write is you pull your hand across the page when you're right-handed, but when you're left-handed, yeah. you have to push it. What? I did not know that. Mm. Neat. There's a little Leo Denaro, uh, Leo Denaro, Leo. <laughs> I don't think they could even hear that. Yeah, it'll show up. It's fine. Oh, yeah. But um, one thing I wanted to say. Leonardo. About like, I don't know why. Leonardo da Vinci. Yeah, anyway. But one thing I want to say uh, again about the Zelda game is that the house, like Link's house. Yeah. In the, in Tears of the Kingdom, it is the best out of every single Zelda game ever, and I'm ever made, at least. Because, like, the only real other good one was Breath of the Wild. Because, like, but you couldn't have as much freedom in it as you could for Tears of the Kingdom. Because Breath of the Wild, you could just upgrade it and it have, like, and it would have, like, weapon. Like, a weapon wall and, like, a bow wall and a shield wall for Breath of the Wild and a bed. And so, like, you can't really choose what goes in there. It just goes in there. Right. But in Tears of the Kingdom, you literally just start off with an empty house plot. Like, and then you can buy pieces of a house to make your house complete. And so what my house is in-game is it's like a goddess statue which it can be used for like upgrading your uh your um stamina or hearts as well as I have a kitchen in there to cook food which actually I didn't know this until very recently but you can cook wood to make food in the game it's called rock hard food I'll show Nifty. it. I'll show it to you after. I will the podcast. check that out sometime. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then I have like a bedroom in the first story of my house, and then I have a really cool looking like conservat. I mean, not conservatory, a study, as well as I have like a wall picture frame thingy where I put a map, well, a picture of a map that I did on a quest, and. Cool, very cool. I took the picture of it because, like, the quest was, like, it's called, like, uh, Dragon Tears or something like that. And basically what it is is, like, each Dragon Tear part that you see, it's, like, a little video, and it's, like, memories, basically. Like, oh, that's cool. Well, but instead of your memories, it'd be, like... Parts of the past that would be like, because in the game, um, in the game you get like, uh, like Zelda, Princess Zelda, she goes into the past and then those memories would just be like seeing her points of views and stuff like that. That's cool. Like the ending of the game, it's very heartwarming, but. No spoilers. Yeah, I won't, don't worry. I mean, I've already spoiled where the Hyling Shield is. <laughs> I'm not too worried about many of our listeners I mean, being too upset about not getting to do that Yeah, themselves. like, there might be some adults who have it, who have the game. I mean, uh, Anthony at work, he said he was been playing it. He likes it. Mm, yeah, I, re- I like it, too. Next time you see him, you should ask him where he's at in the game. I bet you're further than he is. Yeah, most um, Like, I'm going to ask him, have you beaten the final boss? I will, I will ask him. I'll see him on Monday. Yeah. I'll ask him on Monday, and I'll find out for you. Okay. Anything else? Um, I was going to say, like, the top part of my house in the game. Oh, yeah, sorry. In the top part, the stairs going up to it, there is a a bow part that I use to store bows and stuff because I think that uh, it's, like, very cool that I can display bows. And so I display bows. Like, yeah, I display the bows on the wall, and they're maybe not my strongest, but probably my coolest looking ones. And then for my, sh- and I also display shields on the wall. And what I display is a 
or at least so far, is I display a Hylian shield. Um, I forgot what one was called, and then, like, the Gerudo shield. But Cool. And then, I also have weapons, which I can't put the, the um, Master Sword um, on a stand, because you can't drop it or anything, but, uh, um, I do put the fierce, I did put the fierce deity sword on the middle one, and then on the left one, I put, like, the scimitar of seven something, I believe that's what it's called, and it goes with the shield that, I don't know what the name of it is, but it's basically, like, a upgraded um, Gerudo dagger and an upgrade Gerudo shield. And then I put, for now, the Demon King spear. In the future, I will probably put a different weapon or a different spear there, but that's just, like, for now. Word. I like it. All right, man. I think, I think we're going to wrap it up unless you got a particular subject you really, really, really need to touch on. No, I'm good. Cool, man. Well, I appreciate you coming and sitting in with me. Thanks. All right. Later, man. Thanks for having me. That's the show with the ease, people. The show with the ease. Um, I don't know. Uh, schedules are messed up. It'll be crazy. I'm planning on putting the... Um, I'm planning on getting back to regular schedule soon. So I apologize for things getting out of order. It'll be a little whack. But uh, we got your show. And uh, I think I love I love having the boys on and talk about some of their school experience, especially since we talk so much about school stuff throughout the... Uh, regular podcast so we're almost agreement almost agreement at gmail.com find us on facebook on twitter on youtube go to the website almostagreement.com eventually i'll get that voter guy 23 up um ugh, things are starting to happen uh go to your favorite podcast writer get us there uh tell your friends about it shoot us an email text us whatever um we're missing stuff there's plenty of stuff going on check out the uh central ebay tavern um it's now open officially we're doing a lot of cool stuff down there uh if you're into comedy we're going to be doing a lot of comedy there as well so um Check out Central Tavern on Facebook or go to uh, eBay Tavern or Central Tavern on uh, Google and you can find our link there <clears throat> and uh, you can check that out. So thanks for listening, everybody. Have a great night and we'll talk to you guys soon.